Fancy. Janet, I'll spotlight you, but you will start at the end of the music. Gotcha. Good morning and welcome oh. to Yulia Valley's Sunday service for October the 11th, 2020. We are so glad you're here, whether you're on Zoom or YouTube or Facebook. We appreciate you sharing your energy with us this morning. Okay, can you hear me now? I'm sorry, Janet, I did that to you. Okay. Well, I will once again welcome you to Unity of Kanawha Valley's Sunday service for October the 11th, 2020. Whether you're here on Zoom with us or watching on YouTube or Facebook, thank you for sharing your energy with us this morning. We begin our service with the lighting of the Christ candle and the ringing of the bell. And Rich, if you will unmute yourself and ring the bell for us, I will light the Christ candle. We light this candle to remind us of the Christ light that shines in each and every one of us. So remember that Christ light as we share our opening statement. Together, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the Good Omnipotent. And take just a moment to allow those words to anchor into your heart. And now let's repeat them once more together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the good, omnipotent. And now we'll go to Ron, Ryan, and Jeff for our opening songs. Hi, everybody. I'm here with uh, the Masked Marauders, uh, Ryan and Jeff, and uh, we're happy to be with you today. And we'll start off with Shirley the Presence. <laughs> Sí, claro. 
request of our guest speaker this morning, number 212, Weave. so glad you're here today uh, for announcements from Monday through Saturday at 530 in this same Zoom room there is a daily word discussion and everyone is welcome to join in that. Now the exception to that is going to be this Tuesday when at 530 in this Zoom room there will be a board meeting. So all you new board members, uh, mark your calendars to be here in the Zoom room at 5.30 on Tuesday. And that's all the announcements I have for today. So I will send it to Lindsay for our opening uh, meditation. Lindsay. Alrighty. It's good to see everybody. It's nice to be with you. So let's just take a moment where we are right now. And notice what, what's hitting the ground. Where are our feet? Where are our, our legs? Where are we being supported? Let's breathe that in. Feel the air that surrounds us. And I invite you to breathe that in through all your cells. Breathe in through your fingers, through your arms, your legs. Feel your lungs and let it go.
Breathe in the energies of the world. May she breathe out, send out that love. Breathe in the un love of the universe. And then send it out to a dear one. Breathing in. Sending, sending forth our thoughts of care and love. Others to a pet, a loved one, our favorite tree, out into the world. Allowing that peace to swell up within us. Allowing that energy and that love to blow out from us. We are blessed. We say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. The word for today is prosperity. I am prosperous as I enjoy my daily blessings. I am comfortable with the person I see in the mirror as I begin my day. I am filled with energy and enthusiasm for my work. My recreation, time with family or friends, or time for learning and reflection. My gratitude grows throughout the day as I take part in activities I enjoy and spend time with people I care about. As I prepare for sleep, I am grateful for the blessings of a day well lived. More than money or possessions, prosperity is an awareness of well being. My ability to enjoy simple blessings. I strengthen my prosperity consciousness as I bless and appreciate my home, my friends and family, and my work. I increase the flow of abundance by sharing my time, talents, and treasure in service to others. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life. Psalm 23, 6. Thank you, Barbie. We are so pleased today to have with us as our guest speaker, Lindsay Linda Wilson. We have a song to do. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, take it to Ron and Ryan and Jeff. Thank you. Here's a beautiful song by Tim O'Brien. We've done this before. It's, uh, it's perfect for the lesson today. One drop of rain. Two, three, Some hill 
hilltop all alone it finds another and together they roll down one morning then another discovering one another exploring adding on to the I was so anxious to hear Lindsay's message that I jumped the gun on her introduction. I apologize for that. But years ago, when Lindsay lived in West Virginia, she was a member of the Unity of Kanawha Valley. She taught at Hillsboro. Then she moved to Florida, where she became a hospital chaplain. And here shortly, she's going to be moving to Canada. So she is a woman that uh, has many wise things to share with us. And the subject of her uh, lesson this morning is living in joy. A fish in the water is not thirsty. Lindsay, I'll turn it over to you. Mm, so nice to be here. Thank you. 
So a fish in the water is not thirsty. We're going to go on a journey and I hope you'll go with me. And uh, this journey was inspired by Danny and Sandy years ago. They invited me to go someplace that really changed my outlook in the world. And I'm going to share that journey with you. But to get ready, I want you to, uh, oh, so we're going to go far and near, very far and very near. And in order to do that, we got to get ready. So kind of roll your shoulders, move your shoulders. And then maybe your neck gently. Just notice where you might hear a little crinkle. Don't force it. Just gentle. And uh, how about your arms? Get your arms ready. Get your hands ready. We're going. We're going. Yeah. Let's bounce on our heels. Bounce on your heels. She's sitting there. Okay, now we're going to get up on our toes, down on our heels. Our toes go up, our toes go down, and the heels come up. Toes go up, toes go down, and heels come up. Toes come up. Can you do that a few times, a half dozen times on your own? Get ready for the strip. They say if you're offered a job on a rocket ship, don't stop to ask what seat, just hop on and go. So we're going to go on this journey to outer space. And uh, like I said, this journey started with Sandy and Danny. You all know how wonderful they are, how much they've done for our church with the hot dog sales and making us have a secure home. And all of you have done lots, I'm sure. Well, Sandy and Jimmy invited me to go to Green Bank with them one year, July the 1st. And that's the week all the astrologers are there. And uh, if you haven't been there at night, you should go at night. But you should really go that week because that week all the astronomers, all the different uh, clubs and so forth all come and they set up their microscopes. And you know, in Green Bank, it's very, there's no cell phones, nothing like that. It's very, very dark, there's no lights and so forth. And so there's hundreds of these telescopes around and you get to go around and you look in the telescope and you can see Jupiter like we can now. Jupiter, Jupiter comes around about every 12 years and so you get to see Jupiter. And you might go over and um, you, nowadays you could see Pluto. Pluto only comes around every 245 days. And uh, so Mars, they might, we might be able to see Mars that comes around every 26 months. And you can see the Milky Way. And it's huge, you know, it's big. The Milky Way has billions of solar systems in it. We're just one. So the other nice part about going up there to Green Bank during that week is they have lots of lectures. And uh, I, I enjoy lectures. I enjoy learning about science. And it doesn't matter to me if it's over my head, which it often is over my head, but I figure I absorb something from it and uh, it's exciting, it's exciting for me. So in one of the lectures, they talked about that there are at that time over 200 billion universes, uh, galaxy universes, get my words confused here, that are observable. And I just checked and now it's up to in the trillions. Trillions have 12 zeros. If you're not a number person like I am. I mean, for me, being as old as I am, a million is hard to imagine. But if you had a billion, say, say a billion was a hundred, a hundred dollars, say, and a million is only 10 cents. So that's how much more a billion is than a million. So we're talking about trillions of observable universes that we can see, that we can observe. And, and they believe there's a lot more. So down in our solar system, oh, and the other thing about our solar system in the in Milky Way, there are more stars than there are grains of sand on the planet Earth. 
Now, I live in Florida, and last week I had three kids visiting me, and there was a lot of sand coming out of these tours. And I used to live in Egypt. So if you live in Egypt or someplace like Arizona, I mean, sand is everything. That's all there is. So in our solar system, there's more stars than there are grains of sand in our, on our Earth. If you can wrap your head around that. Amazing. So in our solar system, we have planets that go around the sun, right? And they all have different loops. Right now, Mars is going around and it's closer to, the, to us than it's been for a long time. It's uh, be another 35 years or something. So that's why we've been sending off these uh, probes to Mars. So there's already two on its way. We'll have one up there in, in February. And so we're learning more and more about Mars. And they're looking at Venus for us to have, uh, maybe go off and live in Venus. And they believe that there's people living on some of these other, uh, some of these other universes. So it's kind of mind boggling, isn't it? Uh, and, you know, um, when I lived in Egypt or I've traveled to some of the ruins in Central America, you can see these pictures of the solar systems and the stars and so forth and how people had studied those, how they set up uh, things like the, uh, in England, the, the stone, Stonehenge is based on the lights. Uh, in, in Egypt and places, there's pyramids where the light comes in at a certain time of the year and so forth. So, our ancestors of long, long ago really, really studied the solar system and, and I guess even our farmers, even in West Virginia perhaps, pay attention to the almanac and when, when to plant things and so forth. So each of us were, was born at a certain time and astrologers will study uh, what signs, what was in the, in the atmosphere when you were born. What sign were you under? They have 12 different houses and they study that and they, they think that has a lot to do with who you are and what your purpose is and how you behave and what things will be easy or hard for you. Okay, so we're going to move a little closer and uh, so certain planets are associated with, with different characteristics. So Mars is a planet of war, and Pluto is a planet of uh, letting the hidden stuff come up. And so a lot of that might have to do with what's happening not only in our country, but in the world with all this stuff happening. And we're closer to the sun now than we normally ever are, so things are hotter than they usually are. Things are steaming up, so to speak. But that's not where we're going today. We're going to come back a little closer to Earth and we're going to look at our moon. And so the moon's a little easier to uh, recognize the effect on us. I guess I should stop with, start with the sun. The sun affects us, doesn't it? It sends us energy. It lets us know when it's day, when it's night. Uh, for some of us, uh, it makes us happier when it's a sunny day. Uh, it has to do with whether it's winter or spring or fall or, or summer. It's always summer here, it seems like. Uh, so, so the sun affects us. So all those things are affecting us. And then we go to the moon and the moon's a little more obvious to us. The moon, uh, you know, makes a difference on women for women's cycles and so forth. The moon uh, makes a difference for the tides when the water comes in and out here. You know, we like to go when the tide is out so we can find all the shells. Um, I, I worked for many years, 10 years, as a hospital chaplain down here at a trauma hospital. And you always knew when it was the full moon, you didn't have to really go out and enjoy it. You could just work away all night long. <laughs> so the moon, the moon has effect on us. So let's come a little closer into our journey and you, when you were born, it made a difference whether you landed in, say, Africa or 
North America, didn't it? You would be somebody different if you came to be in Africa than in North America. And when you came to Earth, it would make a difference if you came to Canada or if you came to Mexico or if you came to the United States. Where you are makes a difference. It makes a difference politically, it makes a difference in lots of ways, but where you land in the United States makes a difference too, doesn't it? California is gonna be a lot different than West Virginia. You're gonna probably eat things, different things in California, You're probably wear different clothes, your education system is going to be somewhat different. Your politics are going to be different. So where you are is affected, affects you. So then we've gotten to the state of West Virginia. We can get down to uh, Charleston. State politics make a difference, don't they? They affect us. And then locally, how about our church? Does that affect us? Is it... Does it matter the name of the street that it's on, Myrtle? Does it matter that it's stone, that it's got a red door, it's got that energy? You know, everything is energy, everything. So everything's sound waves or light, a, a, um, light waves. And all those planets and all those universes that we just went and explored out in outer space, they're all laying in this energy. They're all surrounded by this energy. I mean, we're talking lots of light years and, and uh, sound years between things. Lots of space. All that space is waves, wave energies. And we understand that because right now we're riding the waves to see each other, aren't we? And you can see me wearing blue because there's blue waves that are coming your way. Uh, some of you have green shirts on today and those waves make a difference. They make a difference. Uh, they have different frequencies. And those frequencies do different things in our brain. Okay. So it seems to me that when I was getting us ready to go on this trip, I forgot the most important part because I wasn't expecting to do that, that uh, meditation in the beginning. So let's just go back to, you know, we got ready for our trip, we shook our arms, we shook out our legs, we put our hand on our diaphragm, okay? Put your hand on your diaphragm, and you're going to breathe in, and you're going to breathe out. And when you breathe in, see if you notice your stomach coming out. When you breathe in, see if your stomach, your diaphragm can move up and back. See if you can notice that energy coming throughout your whole body. That energy, those light waves and so forth are surrounding you, all around you. Allow that energy to come forth in you. And breathe it out. And just like we did before, and what I meant to do before we started on this journey, is when we were ready to blast off, we're sending love back to the planet. We're sending love back to our loved ones. So feel that. Try to put your hand on your stomach and feel your diaphragm going back and forth and sending out that love energy that you have at this moment, every moment sending it out. And that brings us to our body. Now, if I ask you what you were, many of you would either say you're your brain or your heart. That's where most people go. And of course, your brain is totally dependent on your heart because your heart pumps the blood that carries the oxygen that goes to the brain. So the, the heart's not working by itself either, right? The heart needs the lungs. And so the lungs bring in the air, but they also, the other important part is the carbon dioxide. 
Sometimes we think of that as bad stuff, but our bodies really, really need that because that's what breaks down the hemoglobin that allows the oxygen to release to the capillaries to run up to the brain and help us think. Okay. So many of us learned in school about, you know, the, the organs of the body, the, the heart and the spleen and the liver and the intestines and so forth. But there's a lot of things we didn't learn about the body. I went, I, I went to nursing school back 50 years ago. And 50 years ago, they were just discovering the lymph system. And they didn't know what it, they didn't really know what its function was. And so when somebody had cancer and they'd notice all the cancer cells in the lymphs, they cut out as many lymphs as they could not realizing that we know today that the lymph system is designed to flush the body, flush the cells out of the body. But the lymph system doesn't have a pump like the heart. So it's dependent on your diaphragm. Your diaphragm squeezes that lymph system and allows that lymph to clean your blood, clean your blood out. So many of us, don't know that and don't pay attention to our breath and don't pay attention to the, our movement. Other things that we don't know, if we, if we had landed in China, we'd be more familiar with the meridian system. I like to think of the meridian system as 12 railroad tracks that go all through the body. And, uh, you know, acupuncturists and, and the acupressurists and so forth use it, massage therapists use it. The, uh, the meridians are attached to the different organs in the body and their energy, like little trains that run through, and your energy can get stuck in one of those little stop, stopping places. Like if you have a point on you that really bothers you, like this one for me sometimes, it's my gallbladder point. I know I, there's something bothering me, I'm angry about something. When it, when it hurts right there. So we have that. We have in, you know, Fillmore, Charles Fillmore knew a, a bit, bit about this. He talked about the 12 powers. Or he also kind of introduced the chakra system, you know, in some, some uh, ancient things and regular things nowadays. You hear about the chakra system and and how the different chakras line up. Or, uh, I lost my thought because I was thinking about the auras. You know, some people can see the auras, the light, the light that we send out. Some people are able to see that energy that we send forth when we're breathing and so forth. I can't, but I understand many people can, or some people can. So, um, and then there's the five elements. And when the five elements get out of balance, then um, like if our earth is out of balance, it's gonna, it's gonna affect, affect our uh, mental, our, our spiritual thing, stuff and so forth. So the fire element is about the uh, heart and the heart meridians and so forth. So all those things are interwoven, just like we're interwoven with the solar system, with the Milky Way, the huge one, or our own solar system. We have lots of parts in our body that we are, most of us are unaware of in our country. And it's, it's my belief that if we pay more attention to what's going on within us than we did the news, we'd have a whole lot more peace within ourselves. And that peace would radiate out. We would be more relaxed and know that everything's in divine order, whether we realize that or not, things are as they should be. That we were born at a certain time, we're a certain person, we're all so different. And as, as Ron sang before, we weave, weave us together in this mighty creation the Holy Spirit. So what I'd like for us to do now is uh, cross your ankles. 
put your arms around you. And then just breathe in, I am here, I am here. And I'll listen. We're often told to go within, be still and go within. And we haven't, we haven't paid attention, we're unaware. We lack understanding. And when we study things like science and we learn about quantum particles that are, that are all around us. I mean, when I went to school, there were cells and protons and neutrons and electrons. But now there's quantum particles and those quantum particles have entrainment. And what that means is that if something moves here, it can move something else far away. So one of the experiments that we did one time was fill a closet with balloons. And we just pushed one little balloon a little ways and we could feel it in other places. That it's like our thoughts. Our thoughts make a difference. They entangle with other things, other thoughts, creations. So if we say, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. And when we come to this place within, perhaps from now on, we'll take some time to just maybe lie on the floor and just explore our body, take a journey through our body, take a journey through each toe, through the ankle, when some, something moves, when we move our shoulder, does our hip move a little bit too? How are we woven together? You can uncross yourself. Did you know that if you have to stoop down to pick something up and you're having a little trouble, that if you pucker your lips or suck on your arm, your body will go down further so you can perhaps pick it up. And the reason that happens is because these circular muscles in your mouth, these, this, uh, lost the word. Anyway, the circular muscles in your mouth are attached to the ones in your throat, your diaphragm, your uh, caloric connection here at the end of your stomach, through your intestines, all the way down to your anus and your uh, urethra. It's all attached. So when you make, when you kiss, send that kissing, puckering noise, you're toning up your body and it's affecting the whole thing. Nothing's not connected. Our body is all connected. What we do in one place matters what we do happen someplace else. And what we do for one another matters. So I thank Sandy and, and Danny for taking me on that trip. I thank you all for going on the trip with me. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, thank you. I am anxious. I'm gonna try that kissing thing as I get down and see what an effect that has. Thank you, thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. So at this time, we do ask that you support our ministry. We are so grateful for everyone who has shared their gifts during this unsettling time, unprecedented time. So if you would, say with me our offering blessing. Divine love moving in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I give in love, I trust God, and I am grateful. And now we'll go to Ron, Ryan, and Jeff for our song. One, two.
every life has a plan Though sometimes the map is out of our hands Every day is a step Though we may not know the reason just yet When your faith fails When your dreams sleep Learn to let go and just let it be Let there be love Let there be light Let there be hope at the end of the night For every heart that's lying in wait Let there be love You are strong I couldn't even count all the ways There's a time to be still Let the river carry you where it will When your faith fails When your dreams sleep Learn to let go and just let it be Let there be love Let there be light Let there be hope in the dark of the night travel yes i know what it's like when you lose your way when the best laid plans unravel that's when you got to Thank you, Ron, Ryan, and Jeff, for the reminder, let there be love. So now we give thanks for the gifts and offerings that come into this church that keep this ministry thriving. We are grateful for people who share their time and their talent and their treasure. We are grateful for messages that remind us that as we go within and experience the peace of God, we do send more peace and love and joy into the world. So we say thank you for everyone who supports this ministry. Thank you for messages of love and music of love. And thank you, thank you, thank you that all is well. And so it is. Amen. So I'm going to go to the gallery view and see if there are any birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate or anything else that anyone would like to share with us that we can celebrate with you. I am not seeing any hands today. So Rich, 
I guess we will go right into our um, peace song and the prayer for protection. I'll send it to Rich. It's Thanksgiving in, in Canada. Oh, Thanksgiving in Canada. Go Canada. <laughs> I don't know what song you sing for that. <laughs> seeing those pictures of everybody wish we could meet in person hopefully soon uh, let's see I can unmute everybody so we can talk if you guys want good service everyone yes yes Lindsay thank you so much yeah, for that thank you didn't ask how long to talk and I was afraid I went over, but I guess I didn't. <laughs> We're used to being run over before. <laughs> oh, Harry. <laughs> now, why are you shaking your head? <laughs> Don't be judgmental now. Come on. I'm allowed to be judgmental once in a while. <laughs> no, I take that back. I'm just teasing. <laughs> I know. I'm just, I can take it. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Lindsay, that was very interesting. Thank you. All right. I've never been to the Green Bank Observatory. I think about it, but I never quite get there. So <clears throat> thanks for encouraging us. Yes. And, Beautiful. It's very impressive from the even from a distance because that that telescope they have, it's like it's two acres big. It's huge. 
It's enormous. It's a big dish. <laughs> we'll have to take a trip. Maybe this could be a unity trip. And some of, some of my friends from out of state that join us every once in a while, like Don and Jan. Um, well, Snowshoe and, and uh, Cass are right around the corner from up there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. I think there are cabins where you can go up and stay in cabins. Yeah. Be there at night. Especially in August when all the uh, shooting stars are shooting. <laughs> wow, sounds like fun. What, what time of year did you say you went when uh, the astronomers gathered together? The first week in July. July, around July the 1st. Okay, thanks. Hi, Dawn in Massachusetts. Hi, Ernie. Hi, everybody. Hi, Connie. Hello, Dawn. Hi, hi, Jan in New York. Oh, Jan. Hi, Jan. <laughs> oh, introduce my husband, George. George's iPad. He's in Canada. Oh, oh hi, George. Happy <laughs> Canada Day. Yes. And you're moving, Lindsay? Well, we, we live there, except the, the virus kept me in the States because I'm not Canadian and it kept him in Canada. So. Oh, okay. Now I get to go back. You do now? They're letting people back in or just? Well, if you're, if you're married and own property and stuff like that. And I could have gone before, except we had our house, we were having our house worked on and uh, then they couldn't work on the house for two weeks if I came up because you have to isolate. So, oh, oh, wow. So, did you say today is Canada Thanksgiving? 